This podcast does not constitute an endorsement by the United States Army or Department of Defense. Welcome back to the Soldier for Life podcast, and I'm your host, Lieutenant Colonel Olivia Nunn. Today, I'm here with a soon-to-be-retired Command Sergeant Major, Tabitha Gavia. Did I get that right? Absolutely. (laughs) Yay, I've been practicing (laughs) because your last name doesn't look like how it looks, and and I'm a a phonetic speller. But uh, So thank you, Sergeant Major, for spending your time here with Soldier for Life and For our listeners, why am I talking to her today? Well, one, it is Women's History Month, so what better than to talk to a successful leader in the Army? But more importantly, as Sergeant Major is exiting from the Army, she she took in a opportunity, which we talk about at Soldier for Life, called the Career Skills Program. So what better way to find out about the program? But let's talk to someone who's actually gone through it and recently. So Sergeant Major, thank you for spending your time here at Soldier for Life. Thank you for having me. It's my absolute pleasure. Sorry, Major. I met you like a year or two ago at AUSA. It was right when the Army had debuted and officially said, we are going to go with the Army Green, the nod back to the World War II uniform. And you actually came by the booth and we did an interview. uh, And I remember that. And so fast forward a couple years later, they're like, you need to meet this. Sorry, Major. I'm like, wait a minute. I already (laughs) met her. I know her. So this is really cool. So with that being said, Sergeant Major, one, thank you for the service to our amazing Army and to our nation, but more so, you're a Sergeant Major. Why did you decide to do a career skills program, and where did you go with that? Oh, great question. First, you know, as a command Sergeant Major, and I've I've been around for a while, um, I knew about the program. I knew that it existed and, uh, you know, um, had played close attention to how the army and department of defense was was you know taking the steps with the bow act so i i think i became a sergeant major right around the time a command sergeant major right around the time the bow act was passed so i've been um very supportive of it um from um from inception so um i learned about how I should say I learned about how I could fit into it um, from my soldiers. So it was actually a soldier um, that was exiting the army. He was one of our recruiters in Alabama that had uh, contacted me. Um, interestingly, we had served together. Um, we were both much, much younger in the 21st Combat Support Hospital. But he contacted me. He was he was exiting and um, he was super excited about the program. And I just kind of wanted to, to share it. And I was like, well, this is this is fabulous. This is a great idea. And we need to make sure that our entire command embraces us. So so my last boss um, in the Army, uh, General Muth, Frank Muth, he was so supportive of it and and particularly with our recruiter. So when you think about it, you know, they you know, they spend, you know, the last 10 years or so of their career and recruiting somewhere in America and focused on those skills. So it's it's imperative that soldiers have the opportunity to um, to take the, I call it the safe zone, the safe zone at the end of the time that you're in the army where you're still drawing a paycheck to find out what it is that you want to do with the rest of your life. And um, the Skills Bridge program absolutely makes that happen. So there's, um, there's just such a variety of businesses and institutions that have signed up for this that whatever it is that you want to do, you can find it. So my experience, I was at, I was, I was, you know, trying to figure out, am I going to go, you know, in this direction or am I going in that direction? And a huge proponent of the, the Army School Bridge Program, uh, SMA Retired Daily, uh, contacted me and asked if I would be interested in um, being part of the program. And I, it kind of blew me away because I, was, I was, hadn't really thought of it to use it for myself. I, I really hadn't given that consideration. I just wanted to have my soldiers have the opportunity to do this. So when um, SMA Daily contacted me, I, I, you know, I went back, went over the things that I already knew. And then I was like, well, I think I'm going to do this. The, the process uh, was fairly seamless. 
And I, I actually, and I didn't know this part, you know, and as a star major, I should have known more about this, but the, the latitude to actually, you know, be on um, permiss- permissive TDY or administrative leave to actually go to the location of where you're, you're, um, where you're doing this. I thought that was wonderful. And this, it's pushed down to, you know, the 06 level and the 05 level, depending on how many days you need. And I think that's wonderful. So it doesn't have to, you know, go so high to, to get permission to do this. You know, your battalion or your brigade commander can sign off on it. So my, my internship with AUSA was 60 days and I learned so much. So I was, I was looking specifically at two things. I, I wanted to learn about nonprofits and, uh, you know, the AUSA is definitely a nonprofit. And I wanted to learn how collaborative civilian teams worked. And although a, AUSA is, has does have um, veterans and retirees on their staff. They also have you know, people that support the military but have not served in the military. And I wanted to see how that that worked. And I also wanted to have firsthand experience in an internship program so I could share that, you know, with the, the people that I, I mentor and, you know, people that I was still part of USTREC at that time. I, you know, not as a, not obviously not as a commencement major, but I was, uh, you know, still serving. I still had time, time left before I transitioned out. So the experience knocked my off. So um, it's, it, you know, that it's structured. It's, um, it gives you the opportunity to grow. It gives you the opportunity to learn. And it's, again, it's a safe zone. And I, I just want to be clear about that. So six months before you exit you know, from the military, whether you're doing, you know, retirement or whether you are, you know, ETSing, uh, those six months, if you afforded the opportunity, you're, you're still getting paid by the army or the, you know, whatever branch of service you're in and it's safe. So you can, you can do this internship program or you can do this training. You can, you know, you know, right. whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. And I think the thing that we need to make sure that we, I clearly identified, and we talked about this before, there is an older podcast that I did with our director of education, Major General Russell, a few seasons ago. So if you haven't heard it, go back to that one. But essentially, for yes, the Department of Defense has a program called the Skill Bridge. And by policy, it says that a service member can utilize in their last 180 days of service or six months that they can go participate in a skill bridge opportunity. It is interchangeable with the words of apprenticeship, uh, internship, and fellowship. It depends on the type of industry that you're going to. But here's one thing I want to make sure if you are Army, because this is the Soldier for Life podcast, if you are Army you don't get all six months. It has to be done in your last six months, but the maximum amount of time is four months. Just making sure that our service members understand that. And honestly, this is what I've seen at Soldier for Life. What I've heard is that most commanders are signing off at around three months. Um, sometimes I get, I've heard four months, but for the most part is a three month um, opportunity. So I think it's awesome, Sergeant Major, that you were able to participate in this very lucrative opportunity to help shape your next step. Or well, as we say, when you grow up, right, when you put away your boots and you grow up. But I think the other thing is, um, you know, here's something that I want to point out. And you, you said this, but I don't know if people keyed in. Your last job in the Army, you were the Sergeant Major for one of Army's command on recruiting, U.S. Army Recruiting Command. That's your job and responsibility is inspiring and getting that next generation to want to raise their right hand. And interesting enough, Soldier for Life has a great relationship with U.S. Army Recruiting Command. I've had quite a few guests from USAREC. In fact, my old boss, the Deputy Commander, uh, General Michaelis. So we know that the work that you guys do is hard. It's not easy. And it's um, a lot of times thankless, but very, very important to what we do. So, Sergeant Major, you were able to participate. You you got this idea because Sergeant Major retired, uh, SMA retired daily called you up and said, "Hey, fellow fellow colleague here, you got to go try this program out." And you did. And you went to USAA, and you talked about how you enjoyed the structure. When you finished that, and you said that you really enjoyed it, did you think that that would lead you to where you are now with 
gainful employment. You're about to take off your boots and you're you're going to follow up with a paycheck. Yeah. So, um, yes, I, I felt that the skills that I, I um, some of them I polished and then I gained new skills uh, would definitely lead me to employment because it, you know, it's, it gives you confidence. I think that's important to state. It absolutely gives you confidence to s- step out into the workforce that, you know, I can do this. I absolutely can do this. And so um, after, you know, my, my internship with AUSA was uh, 60 days. And again, I learned, I learned so much. And, and it's, uh, it's just, I would just say nonprofits are absolutely fascinating. And the support the AUSA provides to, you know, to the Army is, I would say it's immeasurable. So um, I was thankful for the opportunity and um, I, I met a lot of great people but I wasn't, I wasn't still quite sure, you know, what I wanted to do. And, um, then I, uh, I was, I was recruited for the, the, basically the next, the next program that I went into. So, um, I, you know, I, I signed out in the army, you know, my DD 14 in hand and I, um, as this wonderful company merit as, you know, offered me this opportunity for, um, to do, a fellowship. And it was, it was kind of like, like, let's, let's see if you fit, you know, we like you, you know, you like us. And, uh, and then, then we'll, we'll just go give it a shot. And wow, I, I learned so much about the systems that it takes a corporation to operate and, and today's world. And essentially that was my, my, my fellowship was uh, integrating into the company and then learning those key systems that it takes to operate and, you know, in a civilian world, it, you know, when I refer to it as civilian world with um, my new colleagues, or it kind of t- takes them back a little bit, you know, it's just not civilian world. It's the world, you know, so, <laughs> so <we're trying> to- <laughs> we get it right. When yes. we say the civilian world, because we've been wearing the uniform and, you know, I'm not too far behind you as I'm in my own fellowship opportunity, but Sergeant Major, what I, what I want to transition to a little pivot here in our conversation is that you were a senior leader in the military. You are a woman leader and we are celebrating Women's History Month. So I quickly just want to talk about what was it like for you to achieve that very last position that you had as you are about to step out of your boots one final time? And I I hope this doesn't sound, you know, too corny to um, to your listeners, um, but it was like magic. It it was magic. And I, I say it that way because you know my background's medical and but as senior leaders we have all these you know skill sets in your toolkit and the fact that you know this the senior uh, command sergeant's major in the army you know like the top 10 you know reviewed you know my records and and said hey let's let's give her a shot at interviewing for this job and and I got my shot. I know the interview, and and I walked into magic. And I here's the thing about recruiting, and and you said it earlier. So it's sometimes a thankless job. You know, if we don't get recruiting right, we are we are a threat to army readiness and essentially a threat to national security because we have to make that mission. And how do you do that? You you have you know over ten thousand young men and women that are grinding every day to make this mission and to be part of that with them was, it was simply everything. And to end my career at United States Army Recruiting Command is just my, my phrase, my soldiers know this, fantabulous, <laughs> fantastic and fabulous. And I, I would just say that, you know, any leader that gets the opportunity to to stand in formation, never in front, but stand in formation with those wonderfully young men and women. That's the opportunity of a lifetime. And I will never, ever forget it. 
It's the most amazing experience. I agree. You know, so I had one opportunity. So I had two leadership opportunities. I mean, let's face it. The military is all about leadership in your whole entire career. But two defining moments. I was a platoon leader and a troop commander. And you're right. There's nothing that can really come even close to that feeling, to that amazing, humbling experience. So how really cool for you that you were able to kind of end it in full circle, right? Because you were recruited into the army and now you left from the other aspect. So thank you for, for what you did for our army and inspiring the next generation. Pivoting again. So you're, you've come full circle. You've done your time. You have grown through the ranks. You are leaving a mark and you've done this CSP opportunity. What would you like to say to your fellow colleagues that are still in uniform, what would you want those fellow first sergeants and command sergeant majors to know about their role in guiding, mentoring, and leading our service members about this type of opportunity? Support, support our soldiers. This transitioning is challenging. And you go from uh, like, again, I'll say the safe zone where you're guaranteed, you know, a job and you're guaranteed structure. And then now you have to step into a world that you may never have been in. Like I, I joined, um, you know, right out of school or it's been a while since you've been in that, that world. So we have to support, you need to support our soldiers. And when they ask to do this program and reiterate what Colonel Nunn said, four months for the Army, when they ask to do this program, let them do it because because there will be other soldiers that can do the mission, you know, that have more time. But what we don't want to do is to send our soldiers out into the big, brave world without, you know, a stuffed toolbox to give them every tool they can have to be successful because they're the messengers for us. So successful soldiers going out into the civilian community and becoming successful, you know, it's a full circle. So they're going to share their experiences and other people are going to want to be like them. Now for, for the, the senior leaders, you need to do this. You absolutely need to um, do at least some aspect of the skill bridge program, whether you're taking, you know, the, the classes that are offered through some different platforms, it's like once a week or, or you actually do a, you know, a fellowship, like, like I've done, um, you, you need to take part of it. And then taking part of it, it helps you understand, you know, what your soldiers are, are going through. This is like going through, you know, the transition assistant program. It's, sitting beside your soldiers, going through that so you can see it from their perspective and, and you know, offer feedback. So you may not be able to, you know, do the, the full Monty, so to speak, but you can do some aspect of it to help you understand the program and then benefit yourself. So one of the hardest things to do, ladies and gentlemen, is translating what a command sergeant major does in the Army to civilian speak. I, I found that very, very challenging. And so, um, but it's definitely doable. And and the uh, uh, Department of the Army and the Department of Defense have offered this to us. And I ask, implore that leaders support um, our soldiers and also participate um, yourselves. Sorry, Major, I don't think I could have said it any better. And I hope that our listeners really keyed in on that um, that call to action, that it is, there's a reason why we stayed in for the army as long as we've done, right? It definitely wasn't for the paycheck. Yeah, you know, we did it because we care, and we did it because we understand what it takes to lead. And this is one of the things that you do to lead your service members. So, Sergeant Major, I had a great time chatting with you today. Um, you know, I, I appreciate everything that you've done, and I wish you so m- very much of the best of luck in everything that you're about to embark upon. But more so for the fact that you help make change. So I appreciate that. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Of course. Appreciate your time uh, that you were able to give us because I know you're busy here at Soldier for Life and sharing your experience. And more importantly, in this month, sharing her story in Women's History Month. Thank you. 
course. Once a soldier, always a soldier, a soldier for life. <laughs>